Coming up, Jonathan joins famous cave explorer Robbie Schmittner to visit a remote cave with a gigantic chamber. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. Submerged caves are mysterious, fascinating places that very few people ever get to visit. But even so, most of the caves I dive have already been explored and mapped. Someone has already laid guideline in there to make it safe for other divers to visit. So the question is, when a new cave gets discovered, who does the exploring? To find out, cameraman Todd and I fly down to Tulum, the epicenter of Mexican cave diving. Hidden within the dense rainforest, there are thousands of cenotes, leading to hundreds of kilometers of caves. At ProTech Dive Shop in Tulum, we meet Robbie Schmittner, one of the top cave explorers in Mexico. After picking up some gear for the day, we hop in our rental car and follow Robbie to a secret spot. Robbie says that getting to this cenote is a little bit tricky, but it's supposed to be worth it. I'm excited. Out in the middle of the jungle, we park the cars and find out we have to transfer our gear to Robbie's truck because our rental car can't make it the rest of the way. Well, we're ready. We're ready for this trek. I know things are going to get serious when Robbie engages the locking differentials. Soon we're driving down a road, better described as a path. We travel half an hour at barely more than a walking pace. Finally, Robbie stops the truck. We're here, wherever here is. I'm dying to see the cenote, but rather than walk all the way there empty-handed, we assemble the gear first. All three of us are diving KISS Sidewinder Rebreathers, the best tool for long-range cave exploration. Fortunately, it's only a five-minute walk to the cenote. Robbie somehow discovered this cenote, explored it for the first time, mapped it, and laid a lot of line. But very few people other than Robbie have ever seen it. And then coming out on the other side, we see some organic debris coming down a slope. Yeah. And eventually we'll do a second hidden jump to the left. Um, connect that one. Then we come to the first or only actually restriction and it's again nothing tough. It's just leaning sideways, go through and then way on the other side. You know? After our detailed dive briefing, we bring in the rest of the gear. Oh. 
sweaty as they are, the wetsuits provide welcome relief from the relentless mosquitoes. The shallow pool of water in this cenote doesn't make it seem like there's going to be much cave to explore, so it's a good thing Robbie decided to have a look. When everything is ready, we follow Robbie through water so shallow I can barely swim. As we emerge out of the clouds of silt we kicked up, things start to look different. Todd and I take a minute to get our cameras white balanced and focused. Then we follow Robbie. We have a long swim to get where he wants to take us. This cave has a secret surprise more than half a mile from the entrance. Within a short period of time, Todd and I realized that this place is special. The ornamentation is spectacular. Since hardly any divers have ever been in here, nothing has been broken. It makes me nervous. I don't want to be the guy that breaks anything. It's pretty slow going because the passages are not huge, and buoyancy control in here is serious business. Soon we reach a spot where we will leave the main line and head down a side passage. Robbie connects a jump reel to the main line so we can find our way back. we head down into a low tube. After what seems like an eternity, we reach another section of line that Robbie installed only a few months ago when he discovered this passage. He ties his reel in, and we keep going. Everywhere I point my camera, I'm filming amazingly delicate formations. Dripstone of all kinds. Stalactites, stalagmites, columns, draperies, and flowstone, all formed by dripping water over thousands of years during the last ice age when water levels were lower and this cave was filled with air. Robbie slips right through all this stuff easily. Todd and I are much less experienced, 
and also have cumbersome cameras, so we go really slowly and take our time. Robbie keeps getting ahead of us and has to wait for us to catch up. We swim over sections of the floor that used to be pools of water accumulated from the dripping ceiling. But then, after about an hour of swimming, Robbie points out a slot in the wall, and the line goes through it. When we're ready, he slips through the crack with his flashlight beam vanishing into an abyss. Todd and I cautiously follow him through. On the other side, I can't take my eyes off the incredible stalactites on the ceiling, some of them massive, thousands of years in the making. But I soon realize that we have entered the largest submerged chamber I've ever seen. Even with 70,000 lumens of light from twin big blue LED floodlights, Robbie can only light up a small section. As we swim around the circumference of this gigantic submerged cylinder, I realize that we can't see the other wall. Based on footage we collected, Todd and I estimate that this room is more than 100 meters in diameter, and it's deep. We can't go all the way to the bottom, but Robbie drops down to 140 feet to show us something cool. In a pile of rubble, some bones and a skull, most likely from a bear. At first, I can't see it. We continue to circle the room at a deeper level. Even down here, the formations are incredible. Robbie finds another bone to show me. He thinks this one is a human leg bone. We start making our way back up towards the top of the chamber. We've already gone into decompression. Soon we pass through the halocline. This is the boundary layer where the shallow fresh water meets the deeper salt water. When we swim through it, the two layers mix and create a blurry, swirling optical effect. Up in the halocline, it's hard to film anything. But once we rise above it, the water is clear again. We slowly make our way back to the entrance of the room, which Robbie calls Yab Yum. In the center of the room, up near the very top, it's less than 20 feet deep, and the water has a tannic green look to it. Finally, we return to our entrance and, one by one, leave the vastness of Yab Yum. 
Once we get into the chamber just outside, Robbie explains that I'll be leading the way out and he will be last so he can collect the reels he laid. This is a real test of my navigational skills. When we get back to the reel, I slow down and wait, because winding up all that line takes a while. And I have time to think about something that seems a bit odd. To me, this cave is one of the most spectacular I've ever seen. But to Robbie, this is just one of hundreds of caves he has explored. In fact, he admitted to us that he has not even named the cenote we used to enter the cave. And that seems like a great opportunity. Thanks to Robbie's expertly laid exploration line, I have no problem navigating us back to the entrance where Noah has been waiting patiently for three hours to film us coming out. Man, Robbie, that was incredible. Oh, that was stunning. I don't even know what to say. I think, you know, the most beautiful place I've ever seen might have been Crystal Caves until today. Yeah. This is this is right up there. This is up there with Abaco. This is in that same level. Incredible. The size of that room is even hard to describe. It's so large. The vast jungles of the Yucatan conceal untold numbers of cenotes, many of which have not been explored. This particular cenote desperately needs a name. Blending English with Mayan, we've officially dubbed it Roja, meaning Robbie's Water. He's too modest to name it after himself, but we think it's only right. Todd and I are extremely lucky that we get to dive in places like this with world-renowned explorers like Robbie Schmidtner. Even though we got to spend three hours in this incredible cave, it could never be enough. I would happily go back 20 more times and never see it all. What an astonishing place in the blue world. If you're an advanced cave diver and you want to take your cave diving to the next level, contact Robbie for an adventure. His details are down below.